medieval hot. Yeah. Right, because medieval people were like, I can't possibly think a woman is hot if Aristotle didn't think she was hot. Oh, did they have soap? They have soap. Mm. And in fact, like, oh, that's so silly because everybody knows that ladies hate sex, actually. <laughs>to betwixt the sheets. It's only Eleanor Janega again. I live here now. I know you That's do. <laughs> and no one else I'd rather have in my bed. Oh, babe. You and Jason Momoa. Yeah, okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. You'd bring the history, though. There's room for all of us. I think so. Yeah. I think, I bet he'd have an interest in medieval history. But anyway, enough of Jason. We are here because it's your book launch, babes. I know. How excited is that? I, I'm really excited. It's, uh, you know, my baby. I've been working on it, you know, for Great years baby. now. Yeah, and now it's out in the world. Yeah, and she's very is. beautiful. She is. Uh, this that's... is a sexy book. Mm. The Wants and Future Sex. Where did that title come from? Was that, or was that one of those ones that you had a massive fight with the publishers? Uh, about, is it, or was it? <laughs> it's, it's kind of a reference to The Wants and Future King, um, so, which is about Arthuriana. I'm right? with you. Yeah, so essentially what it, it's doing is flagging people up to the fact that this is a book about medieval things, but also what it's kind of hinting at is the fact that I'm talking about medieval women in the book, mm. but also, you know, the idea of that if we really dig into ideas about gender from the past, we can understand our own as well, and then hopefully make a more equitable future. Haha. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So this is this is definitely your brain baby this is a mm. labor of love I, was, I want to ask you like where did it come from what did what was the inspiration for this but i think i just know it's because you're a committed pervert oh that's true <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it, it kind of like started out like from being you know a committed pervert who gossips about dead people's sex lives yep. for a living yeah um and the, one of the things that i you know continuously notice when you tell people oh yeah i work on medieval history and sex is they are so confounded by the way that medieval people think about women and sex because medieval people are like, oh, women are just these insatiable, horny sex monsters. Yep. Um, all they want to do is have sex. And people are like, oh, that's so silly because everybody knows that ladies hate sex, actually. <laughs> you know, And uh, I find that really interesting and important to talk about because really the point of the book is that we are constantly changing what it is that we think women are all the time. You know, we explain yeah. what women are like constantly. And we then come to the conclusion, well, women are bad and they're less than men, mm. right? So men are, are the good one and like women are bad. And the reason women are second class citizens is because of all these silly things about them. But we're constantly changing what's bad about women all the time. Because in the medieval period, it's like, oh, well, women are massively horny. So uh, like you can't have them in public life because they'll just be humping chairs. Uh, you know, like... But it's actually a really, really old idea. Okay. Um, so it comes to us really through the transmission from the classical period. So you ask anybody like Plato, Aristotle. Oh, I knew they'd be involved. Every time, right. every time. And they're like, yeah, women are massively horny. Um, and it's because even for the ancients, uh, sex in and of itself is considered bad. Um, and okay. so the idea here is that sex um, basically overrides all of your kind of intellectual... I mean, it kind of does. I'd have to agree with him there. I've done some really f***ing dumb things before. Well, see, there you go. Because you're just an average woman, you know. It's my lady brain. It's my poor it's lady, lady brain, brain. Right? And so the way that Aristotle looks at it, uh, you know, he says that women are kind of like uh, inside out or deformed men. These right, are the ways he's that losing he me a bit now. Yeah, he's, okay. he's a bit of a d right? Uh, and so women are kind of just the opposite of everything that a man is. And what men are is like... But opposite in a bad way. In a bad way, yeah. Right. So men are like stoic and logical and they're, they can be ideal citizens and they can like contribute to, you know, the Athenian discourse or whatever right. the hell. But women are stupid, horny lizard people who, <laughs> you know, are basically just trying to fight all the time and also hump things. So the idea is that like men can overcome this, but women can't, right? Right. And so medieval people then, you know, they love uh, any ancient, right? Especially yeah, Aristotle. Yeah, they, they never updated no. their medical text, did they? It no. was very much about digging out the classics. Mm -hmm. You just like look to the classics and then you kind of do this thing where you go, oh yeah, and Jesus on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, and when you add the Bible in, things are also like really point to, oh, well, women are horny because uh, you just go and you look at the Garden of Eden. Yeah, right. but men are f***ing on in the Bible too. Solomon with his 850 
Why? Oh, yeah, but like that's fine. That's all right. Is it? Yeah, it, but it's it's really interesting because you you see all this kind of like mental gymnastics around that, mm. right? Uh, so, for example, you see like even in the conception of medieval sex work, right, where it's like, oh yeah, well, sex work has to exist because you know if men don't have an outlet to have sex, then they'll just like riot and burn the city down. So you better <laughs> you better have sex workers, you know, for unmarried men. So clearly men are like horny enough that they might like burn shit to the ground if they don't have access to sex. But women are the horny ones. This, I'm trying to get like the, to the bottom of what did medieval people think of women? And mm -hmm. this is actually, it's a huge question because medieval, it's actually about a thousand years of history, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's a vast swathe. Yeah, and obviously we know a little bit more about kind of the later period because, yeah. you know, it's just closer to us than, yeah. you know, uh, further in the back. Like, you know, the eighth century is a really long time ago. Uh, mm. And but it's interesting because you can see kind of kernels of things in there that go along. But there's certain things. So for example, um, I really talk about beauty standards a lot in this. Yes. And we spend a long time, like in the earlier medieval period, where we just don't really talk about what we think a hot woman is. Um, and that's really much closer to the kind of Greek, ancient Greek way of thinking about things. So if you go back and look at like ancient Greek texts when they talk about what a hot woman is, which is what mm. medieval people were doing, yeah. right? Because medieval people were like, I can't possibly think a woman is hot if Aristotle didn't think she was hot. <laughs> like I wouldn't, how would I ever? Um, so they go back and look at all these texts and they're like, okay, well, let's go see how they describe Helen of Troy. Right. Because right? she's the hottest How do they describe Helen of she's Troy? She's blonde. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And, and also sometimes they're like, she's the cutest. <laughs> and like the, that is it. Like, and, and so that's all we know. And then like, you know, in descriptions of the Trojan Wars, like sometimes like uh, Briseis or Polyxenia, like they will get described and they're like, well, Briseis is tall. Polyxenia, she's not tall. Right, so lots of details. So, yeah, so there's like nothing at all to go on. And it's, it's quite interesting because it's very much like a beauty is in the eye of the beholder type of situation. Right, okay. And then when you're in the earlier medieval period, when people describe women as being beautiful, they're just like, oh yeah, she's beautiful. And then like, that's it. And then that's that. No detail, right? Right. Then from the 12th century forward, they're like, no guys, like we've got to get this down. And they kind of like come up with what a beautiful woman is. Uh, and it becomes really ossified, right? So there is this idea, and they so they scan from the head down to the toes. When they who's scanning? Who's, who's doing this? Who's so there's like this? poets. So there's like this guy, uh, Geoffrey of Vinsauf, who's right. like he writes this whole uh, basically guidebook on how to write poetry. And he's like, hey, if you want to describe a sexy woman, this is what a sexy woman is. What What did he say is a sexy woman? Okay, so she's got blonde hair, um, a high uh, hairline. You've got to have like. I do have hairline. a high forehead. Oh, you, okay, you're in. You're in, baby. Okay. Right, okay. Um, you got to have arched eyebrows, preferably black. I, I could nip to boots and get. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so um, gray eyes. Blue eyes. Yeah, like blue is okay. okay. Gray is better. Gray's better. Okay. Um, like a nose that is neither too big nor too small. I think I could. I do that. That's okay. okay yeah, that's okay. fine. Yeah, white skin. I did fake tan the other night. Yeah, see that here right, right. now. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then you gotta have like a cheeks like roses. Yeah, no, that, yes. Uh, a mouth like a rosebud, uh, white teeth. They could be white. Yeah, yeah. Mm, well, they always could, right? Um, a neck like a swan. Definitely not, no. Yeah, um, small shoulders. No. Small high breasts. No. Uh, a pot belly. Yes. Um, a dump truck ass. Yes. Okay, yeah, thick thighs. Yes. Uh, feet. <laughs> I have feet. There you go. <laughs> so, you know, like you're, the checklist's pretty good, right? right? I am medieval hot. Yeah, there you go. So I'd be on tapestries all over the ancient world. Yeah, and it's like, that is, and then for them, they're like, okay, that's, that's what it is. And it, really? They like to fat in the pot belly? Oh, God, yeah. They're, they are like, they are like pear shape, baby. They're like, they don't want to see titties. They're like, really? those titties better be up by your armpits. Or, Did you see that in medieval yeah. paintings when it looks odd? It looks like the breasts are trying to go in different directions. Yeah, and they're like, me, right? That's that, <laughs> that's that's what they gotta be like. So, like, they're they're looking for that pear shape, and they are they are hardcore about it to the point where you know, if I'm ever online like posting pictures of like you know a hot medieval babe who's naked, people are like, why is she pregnant? And I'm like, uh, that's her luscious little belly. Wow. That's why they and and uh, you know, so now we just don't think that's hot at all. Oh my but God, it's not that hundreds I'm not of years. hot. It's I was born hundreds of years too late. You know, well, what I would argue, babe, is that perhaps creating an archetype that is really rigid of 
thinking like <laughs> the only way to be hot is this one thing is a social construct. And All right, yeah, like yeah, okay, to... that's right. We're not doing that. Okay, because yeah. like, oh, don't take that away from me. I was really excited then. But this is like the thing, right? Because um, now when you see like uh, women that we call hot, uh, yeah. there will be like all these nerd ass nerds who are like, uh, actually, it's evo psychology, and um, we developed, uh, we evolved this way to think that this particular woman is hot. And I'm like, oh really? Because for 700 years they wanted like chicks that were just like packing a Moomins. booming system in the back, right? And like that's all they wanted. So it can't possibly be evolutionary. Like this is this is just like social. And like that's is, fine. Is there anything that has been constant? Like throughout I, I suppose being healthy probably. Like uh, things cleanliness are cleanliness and cleanliness good skin. And good skin. Yeah. Sparkly eyes, probably. Yeah, it's like, and that is always universal. So even now, there's only like a couple of universals in terms of what everybody mm. finds attractive, and it's like cleanliness and good skin. Oh, uh, straight teeth. Well, no, not even straight teeth. No, no, I take that back because there's plenty of people who like crooked eyes. So and there, like, there are some cultures today that, that stain their teeth. Yeah, yeah, supposed yeah. To be. Exactly. So, but see, even in the medieval period, washing yourself. Yeah. Very important. Medieval people bathe. Oh my God! Please, right. please leave me alone. Medieval people <laughs> washed. They wa and they were really the fastidious about it. Yeah, well. yeah, because it's like it's um it's very much a cleanliness is next to godliness sort mm. of thing. It's uh, you know keeping clean is well a really comfortable and everyone gets that yeah. and b it's kind of like seen as uh, keeping yourself pure in the the same way that it is now really and but like it can't have been as easy to keep yourself no. because like I rolled out of my hotel bed this morning and there was pretty much rolled into the shower and mm -hmm. there was free soap and like this anti back on hand medieval people they didn't even have like running sewers yeah they, so like how if you because we're in London right now and if you're a medieval person mm -hmm. in London and you want to keep clean it, it must be quite tricky so how do they do it if you're a medieval person mm. and you're rolling out of bed first thing in the morning what you would do is you'd kind of go stand in a wooden tub and you would just take some water and just give yourself a good wipe down. A whole wash. Yeah, whole, yeah exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you would like soap yourself up, you'd wash in like real quick Did wash. Do they have down. soap? They have soap. Mm. And in fact, it's one of these things where soap it massively kind of like expands as an industry in Europe, specifically during the Middle, middle Ages. What, what do they make soap out of? Uh, they make it out of ash, lye, and oil. Does that work? It does, yeah. So it's like, it's pretty much the same recipe for soap, uh, like uh, from time, well, no, not, not time immemorial. Really? Memorial, yeah. Yeah, so like, um, you know, big centers of soap production still exist. So like Marseille in France, like oh, they were making soap then, they're making it now. Um, Castile. So where Castile soap comes they from. They would have smelled French. Yeah, they would have. And so, but here's two things, right? right so sorry, ri okay. rich people probably have that French soap. And rich people are probably like having, you know, the nice soap that comes from Italy and stuff. You, if you are a normal person, you probably make your own, but it's totally something that you can make and yeah, something yeah. that they do. So they make their own soap. You just give yourself a good wash down. Then like maybe once a week, you'd go for like the full bath. That's because they had public bathing, didn't they? Mm -hmm, so That's something my students are always really surprised when I tell them that. That like, uh, how many friends have you had that you've got in the bath with? Yeah, and they for them it's just like this is like the leisurely thing to do. Yeah. You'd be like, come on, everybody, we're going down to the bathhouse, and you just Grab like kick it, and you know it's just like it's spa day, and mm. and you know it's just completely fine. But you got they got a really different understanding of kind of what privacy is in the Middle Ages. Like, the idea of privacy is just like not there. Okay, you know, like you sleep kind of in a room with six other people, and you know. You and the homies go get naked down the baths, and yeah. you know, yeah. like it's it's just not considered the same sort of way that we do now. Okay, okay. So the the there is soap. Mm -hmm. Where would they get water from if they lived in a city? So in the city, there are wells and fountains and places that you would get that. Here, often too, people do get Thames water. Like you, you can go down to the Thames and do it, but a lot of the times it's wells, okay. uh, wells and springs and stuff. So you have like fountains and stuff around. Okay. So that definitely exists. So you've given yourself a bit of a wash until you can go with your mates mm -hmm. and, get in the, and get in the tub. Yeah. With your neighbors as mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. apparently. Mm -hmm. um, like what about things like uh, bad breath or combing your hair or mm -hmm. makeup or anything like that? Like how do you put your face on? In yeah, the okay, so um, they do brush their teeth. They've got like little kind of twigs and stuff that they brush their teeth with. And interestingly, that's kind of as good as it gets until the 1960s. Because it's not until we started adding fluoride to toothpaste that toothpaste did anything. <laughs> like it might make your breath smell good, but it's like it is not fighting like it's, it's shit, like right. the the actual scrubbing is what okay. cleans your teeth before then. So fine. So you know it's pretty much exactly the same level. And probably they have better teeth than a lot of us do anyway, because they just don't have as much mm. access to sugar. Yeah. Like they are they are yeah. not eating cane sugar like constantly because we're living that good life, baby. But yeah. uh, anyway. 
So there's that. A lot of makeup. Um, girls will make their own. Okay. And we have lots of really cool recipe books about this. A big famous one is called The Trotula. Um, and it was allegedly written by Trotta of Salerno. But uh, Trotta of Salerno, we know, definitely wrote this bit that is like about midwifery. And it's like, here's how you like birth babies and stuff. And then what medieval people do is like when they want to get their you know cosmetic guide out they just like start putting it together oh that's that. clever and then they're right. like yeah trot of salerno wrote this thing and there's all sorts of things that you can do so they uh, make like face whitening powders um they've got kind of like regular regular old powder just to kind of like get the blot off they make lipstick they make blush um they have you know various kind of like washes that you can put over your face and even people like uh, hildegard of bingen had like oh yeah she was like a skincare girly and she was all like, oh, yeah, here's she, my, like... Is she a nun? Yeah, she's a nun. Oh, okay. And, and she was all like, oh, here's, like, a really good, like, skin softener for if you've got, like, wind-chapped... What was her skin softener? It was, a, like, a barley water thing where you kind of, like, boil down barley with some uh, varying flowers and stuff. And apparently that works, like, because there's... I think there's, like, some glucose or something that kind of, like, comes off the barley. Nice. So, yeah, so, you know, they have these things. Um... Some of them get quite wild, though. Uh, so, for example, like depilatory creams, like in order to get rid of hair, because oh, f because no. they really want that, you know. And they're they're doing their legs, and they'll like do their pubes as well. Like it goes all the way. Oh no! Yeah, but they make some depilatory creams, and baby, it's bad. What do they put in like, there? Like some of them the are medieval imac. What? Yeah, like some of them are like literally kind of like caustic. And, and so they'll be like, oh, yeah, and that's like, this will definitely get rid of your hair. And then they're like, <laughs> and here's kidding. what you put on afterwards on like them. And, and so like some of them are like nasty, nasty. Right. Come on, hit me. Hit yeah, me like, a... yeah. So like I've, I've seen them and they have, you know, and it starts off pretty nice. And it's like, yeah. oh, there's iris root. And you're like, OK, like yeah. iris roots in everything. I don't know why. Uh, so there's like, oh, there's iris root and there's camphor. OK, OK. And then they're like uh, carbolic acid. And you're like, girl, what? And then like, hey, where am I coming up with this? But like, apparently they're like, that's around the joint. And it's like. So were they, did they have Brazilians then? Yeah. I mean, you know, burnt flesh, Appa but Brazilians. Apparently they're like just straight up waxing and stuff like that, big in the Italian lands. I have read that actually. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. um, a lot of people coming back from Italy commenting on the fact that their courtesans didn't have pubic hair. So yeah, it yeah, must yeah. have been a thing. It was a really big thing. Um, and so like it, there, it's specifically kind of talked about as things that women do to please their husbands. And it's, you know, kind of like right in there. Yeah. Always. Was red hair part of medieval perceptions of beauty? So it doesn't really come up a lot. They just talk about how horny they are for blondes. Right. Um, and then like redheads kind of like get into the scale of that where they're like, they're kind of blind. See, so, so like occasionally you'll see some images of people where it's like you, you can't tell if it's supposed to be red hair or, or blonde hair. So okay. for example, like, you know, like the little Eve on the front here, she's, she's virgin on, yeah, she's virgin on ginger. I, that's what made me think yeah, that, you yeah. know, if Eve can rock, Red mm -hmm. hair. Actually, actually, while we're talking about this, and I know that your book is like it's it's focused a lot on women. Was anybody writing about what a fit man is in the medieval period? Did they have pot bellies and big? Asses? Interestingly, there's these. You're well. I say interestingly because you're not going to be surprised, mm. right? Like, uh, so the way of kind of thinking about the ideal woman and the ideal man is like really different. In that, like, the ideal woman is a maiden, right? A maiden yeah. is this kind of like, uh, yeah, right. It's like, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Like, and, and like maiden kind of describes this sort of liminal zone, kind of like we talk about teenagers. So the ideal woman is kind of younger uh, to the point where, you know, you will see things like if somebody's child dies, like in um, the Pearl poem, which is about a father who kind of like goes and sees his uh, dead child in heaven and she like dies when she's two. In heaven, she's a maiden and she's like 20 because that's the ideal body and that's what you get. Huh. For men, middle age is ideal. Oh, which is so it's right. like in the, in the four, in your 40s. That's like oh, what the ideal man is. That's so unfair. And it really sucks, right? Where it's kind of like, yeah, you just kind of like get there. And and so this is a really interesting thing. If you ever see, for example, um, the Last Judgment paintings that you get from the medieval period when everyone's getting up out of their grave to like go see St. Michael and yes. be like, do yes. I get to go to I heaven? And everybody's naked because like that, that's their little souls. And all the women look the same, like the ideal hot woman. And all the men are in their 40s. They realize that teenage boys aren't yeah sexy. they cannot possibly be <laughs> ideal and, and that's kind of actually part of it because um they're considered like so um hot and dry right in humoral theory it's like they're burning too hot they're too wild with it right. and like you need they need to settle down a little bit okay um whereas women because they're colder and wetter start out colder and wetter you're just becoming colder and colder and wetter all the time 
and that uh, is kind of like what leads to death. It's thought so. Like aging is thought of as a process of becoming colder and wetter over the life cycle. God, that's the, right. Okay. So uh, you know, it's nothing that you won't hear from some incel now. I mean, you get that now, don't yeah, you? Yeah, but yeah. Like, um, in, if you look at and most Hollywood films, mm -hmm. is, like the the guy is years and years older than mm -hmm. his, his leading lady. Yeah, it's like you know, the minute you turn like twenty six, it's like all right, spinster. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. <laughs> like, <laughs> get in the get in the closet with that. You're not too cold and wet. Exactly. Like we're we're not having it. So you know, we haven't really come that far on that. Oh, one. we really haven't, have mm -hmm. we? God, that's depressing. Right.